From the ashes of communism, a shadowy institution still lives on half a century later in the heart of Europe. At the peak of the Cold War, the Soviet Union sought to coordinate economic activity in other communist countries through the International Investment Bank. With the fall of the Iron Curtain, the bank lost power and purpose and was left dormant for two decades. But as recently as 2019, it moved its headquarters from Russia to Hungary, where it was granted tax and oversight exemptions, unrestricted travel and diplomatic immunity for its staff. Led by Nikolai Kozov, the banker suspected ties to Russia's security services. His parents were reported to be top operatives for the KGB in the 70s. A Russian news agency described his mother as one of the most extraordinary spies of the 20th century. The IIB's members now include both post-communist democracies like the Czech Republic and Slovakia, and authoritarian regimes, namely Russia, Vietnam and Cuba. The bank promises to support the economic development of its members, but has it delivered on this pledge? And should the Czech Republic still be part of this Cold War era holdover? Membership of the bank isn't free. Member states pay millions of euros every year, which is then redistributed to companies via loans and investment projects. Some fear that if the Czech Republic leaves the bank, it won't get its money back. That's what happened to Poland. It left the bank in 2000, but 21 years later, it's yet to receive a cent back from its investment. As the bank's fourth largest contributor, the Czech Republic has paid in 37.4 million euros. But as Russia has contributed 47% of the bank's capital, it has the greatest influence. There's no evidence of any significant positive contribution to the Czech economy from IIB membership. It's a minor player in the loan guarantor business, seemingly catering to marginal companies that may struggle to obtain guarantees elsewhere. In the Czech Republic, the IIB guarantees loans to a handful of small companies selling outdated manufacturing technology to post-Soviet countries, including Armenia and Belarus. Czech exports to Eurasian Union countries account for just 2.5% of total exports in recent years. In contrast, roughly 85% of Czech exports go to other European Union countries. The IIB touts its operations as successful, but its only direct investment in a Czech company was widely reported as a corruption scandal. This investment involved four related companies, Pilsen Toll, Pilsen Steel, Pilsen Estates and United Pilsen, all essentially tied to an aging factory near the city of Pilsen. Established in 2007, Pilsen Estates was a separate legal entity that owned land which Pilsen Steel rented. United Pilsen was set up in Luxembourg and purchased both Pilsen Steel and Pilsen Estates using a 110 million euro loan from the Russian state-owned Venetia Econom Bank. Pilsen Toll handled the loan on behalf of Pilsen Steel, charging it high rates of interest, while Pilsen Estates consistently overcharged it for rent. This went on for years, hollowing out Pilsen Steel, driving it into bankruptcy, while the other companies turned steady profits. Despite Pilsen Steel's continued decline in output, mounting debt and financial instability, the IIB granted two loans to Pilsen Toll. 35 million euros in 2015 and 15 million euros in 2017. One investigation revealed that in 2017, around 100 million euros in assets were wiped off the books at United Pilsen without explanation, suggesting these profits were embezzled, while Pilsen Steel remained saddled with debt. After IIB's involvement, Pilsen Estates and Pilsen Toll both filed for bankruptcy in late 2019. Once a busy factory, Pilsen Steel at its peak employed around a thousand workers. It's now bankrupt and defunct, likely permanently. As long as it includes EU member states, the IIB gives Russia a veneer of global prestige and leadership, while the benefits to the Czech Republic are outweighed by the costs. Membership comes with the risk of corruption, 
corruption scandals and Russian statecraft. And even the IIB could bolster the Czech Republic's position internationally and inspire other members to do the same. The bank has been tolerated for 50 years. But it's time to send this gift back to Russia. To find out more, read our report.